Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to expand upon a previous video we did on expanding the GPU IO of your ESP32 by using some IO board expanders. I'm going to show you guys how I built this little thing right here. It has two of those board expanders connected and it gives us a total of 32 sensors. Now you may be asking, why do you want to build one yourself? And the reason behind it is I would like to have the ability to remove and add my own modules. So if something goes wrong or something breaks, I want everything to be able to be unplugged and plugged back in instead of having a pre-made board that we did a video on previously as well. And Simon Says Home Assistant also recently did a video on a different board from the same supplier that does contain additional IO. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But with that said, we can go ahead and take a look. And down in the description, you'll find a link to the written article that will include some additional information as well as the code I used to set everything up. So you can go through, follow along with this video. The code is also provided here on the website. You can go ahead and copy that. Uh, I would like to preference that this is the first time that I built anything like this. So for anyone that is an electronic engineer or does circuit boards, please don't judge me. Uh, I'm trying. The first thing you guys need to know is how I connected up everything. So I'm going to quickly show you guys just what I did right here and the components that I use. So the first one in here is going to be a mini buck converter. Now you can use a normal buck converter as well. I would actually recommend using a normal button, but as these mini ones are kind of iffy and they mess around a lot. So what I did with this one, I wanted to use 12 volts as well, because a lot of the sensors that I use or would like to connect on here uses 12 volts. And a lot of the distances we sometimes run powering those PIR sensors could also benefit from using a higher voltage to make sure that when it gets to the sensor itself, that there is at least enough power to actually power the sensor on. We're not talking about signal. That is a different conversation entirely. So that's why I'm using a buck converter. So my idea is I'm going to pull in 12 volt right here into the buck converter. We will need to make sure that we adjust this before you connect this to anything. Please make sure that you have set this to be five volts and not any higher than five volts. So from this, all I did was I went through, I connected it to the VIN pin and the ground pin right here. And you'll see it also comes out this side. This is just a bunch of headers. That is the ground side where I can connect all my grounds to. Then on the 12 volt side, directly from the input right here, I also put on a couple of 12 volt blocks right here, which will allow me to connect those. And then if you scroll down, you'll see we also have those expander boards. So I'm connecting two of them, meaning that I have 16 for each. So I'm expanding my ESP32 with an additional 32 inputs or outputs. I also added a relay on here. This is to trigger a siren in the future. So we may take a look at that. So the way it's been connected up, we have the 12 volt rail here. It'll only be used for a few sensors. I did include a 433 megahertz receiver as well. These are the cheaper ones. It can be powered by 12 volt, which is a better option in my opinion. And then I just connected the two data pins all the way to D2 right here. And then the ground pin just goes to the ground of that uh, module right there. As for the expander boards, these are fairly straightforward. Well, I, all we're going to use in this one is the RX and the TX pins. We're going to bring those down to the expander board and the RX pin goes all the way to SCL, the TX pin or TX0 goes all the way to SDA. And we bring those straight down. The reason why the layout is put this way is so it fits on the specific perf board that I have. So if you go down, these are just connected directly all the way down to exactly the same two ports in here as well. Then VCC is just coming straight from that five volt output on the VIN or of the buck converter. Going down, you'll see I also connected a relay. This was kind of an afterthought, so it was just added onto the board externally, and then I soldered that in. So we have ground and the VCC, and then we also have the N pin. I'm not sure why this wasn't connected, but this goes all the way up to D32, if I'm not mistaken. So I just added that on there. Let's just move this out of the way, which is what is going to control the relay that we have set up here. And then for the expander board itself, these are fairly straightforward. So all I did was I just 
wire the um, connection straight to these terminal blocks onto that perf board. So these are all soldered in. The main idea behind this is to have a board you can easily replace each and every single component with. So I can unplug and replug any of these and replace them very easily without the need of replacing an entire board. So all of these are meant to be removed and then replugged in obviously this is the first time i'm attempting this so there's a few items i would like to improve upon but as you can see all of these are using the standard components and standard modules which will just be unplugged and plugged back in so there's nothing special about the actual backside or the perf board itself it's just a simple way where i connected all of the wires onto the perf board itself and that's about it there's nothing special to it we connected everything in here make sure all of these are matched very important to make sure you adjust your voltage before actually connecting the esp32 i'll leave more information in the written guide down below that guides you through everything that i have connected up including the backside of these boards so you may notice if we go to the written article i show you how i connected these because these use i2c so it's very important that we give them separate addresses so on these ones say for example my first one i think this is um address at 0x21 if i'm not mistaken and this is 0x20 or the other way around but as long as these doesn't have exactly the same uh, soldered pins on the back side of these boards you should be good and esp home would be able to detect those i did do a previous video on how to detect what is the address of the i2c connection so you can go ahead and take a look at the previous video that we can go over on there as well now with that said let me quickly show you how i created this board and how i connected everything up and then we can take a look at the code there we go so if we take a look at the board you can ignore these these are just that i'll be using for testing it is fairly simple and straightforward i wish i could show you the backside but unfortunately i glued everything closed and there's not really an easy way for me to show you all of the wires but it has been set up straightforward the main reason is to have the ability to remove all of these and to replace them if necessary or if something goes wrong you can always unplug them and replace it with a different sensor if needed i have my 12 volt in here i'm using a different plug just to plug it in my back converter is all the way up here so it sits right there and then it just brings down all the wires i do have an additional 12 volt wire this red wire that's running around here is going into the relay that we have set up this is to control the siren that i'm planning to add on here and then uh, as you can see with the relay, I did connect these externally, so I'm powering it straight from here. If you're setting this up and you plan ahead, you should be able to also use this on the backside and lay your wires out the way you need to in order to connect those. Unfortunately, in my case, this was an afterthought, so I just added those in there. And then we have the two expander boards, and as you can see, we can remove them from here as well easily and then just the headers where we can uh, add in our sensors so when we set this up it's fairly simple to connect everything i do have another header right here this is for the 433 expander if you want to add that this is optional you don't really need to have it on there but i thought i have it so i can may as well just add it onto the board itself so one more tip that i have i would recommend programming this outside of being plugged into the board so you just take it out plug in the usb program the esp first and then once you're finished and you know the board is working and functioning you can go back in and connect everything up to the board itself so let's go in and take a look at the code there we go so in esp home you'll see that i have my alarm board set up so i'm just going to click on the edit button right here and just quickly go through the way this has been set up the code that i have included is going to be from right here where it says captive portal you can go through and copy those usually if you set esp home up you already have all of the above so you'll just paste the code right below from the website that i have provided now this is fairly straightforward i have disabled the remote receiver since there is no 433 plugged in at the moment but if you do have one that you are connecting you can just remove these or uncomment these and that will be part of the code and it should work you can always modify these depending on your specific board and the way you would like to filter your requests that you do receive. But the first thing we need to have in here is obviously going to be that I2C. So we need to tell it like, hey, we need to use I2C and we need to identify the pins that we're going to use for I2C. 
In this case, it is GPIO1 and GPIO3, which is our TX0 and our RX0 pin. And then a bus, we just need to give it an ID. This is all on bus A. We're only using one ITC or one RX and TX pins from the ESP. You can use more than that, but in this case, it won't be necessary. So we'll just use a single bus and we'll connect everything to the same network. I almost want to say network. So then we need to identify the two uh, expander boards that we have connected. So in ESP Home, we already have a pre-existing template for that. So we just say right here, we add an ID for it. And then we have that address, which is the important part. So I showed you guys how I soldered the backside of those two boards. And I may have been wrong because the way mine is soldered, I have a X20 for the one address. And then for the second one, I have an X24 address. Now I did give these names as well. It is extremely important. You can change these names, but you need to remember if you do change these names that you need to change it everywhere that you are referencing those for the pins. The other section I have in here is just the relay. So it's just a switch. It's on GPIO, it's on pin 32. It is inverted on my specific instance. The ID is just something for ESP to be able to identify this if we ever need to reference back to it. The name, it is a siren and I added an icon in there as well so we can see it in Home Assistant. Now as for the sensors, they are all pretty much the same. The only things that we want to take a look at is these are all binary sensors. If you want to use relays instead of binary sensors or do a combination of them, the only thing you actually need to change on the code that we have listed right here is you'll move this from being under the binary sensor to being under the switch tab. So it'll you can literally just copy this, paste it in here, and then you'll change the mode from input to output. Now I do have notes explaining this as well, so you can just copy this, paste it in there, and then change that to output, which means it'll change to a switch with an output, so you can trigger relays for it. So in here, we have the platform. It's always going to be GPIO in this case. We have the name, which is the name that'll show up in Home Assistant. The ID, again, this is for ESP Home to be able to reference it. Then we have device class right here. As you can see, mine is just set as a door. I always recommend adding these, especially in Home Assistant, it adds an icon. It gives you the states correctly when it's open or closed or when it's a PIR sensor. Um, it can be in motion in here, or if it's a window, you can add window. Uh, there's quite a few different device classes you can use. And it also helps when you are setting up Alarm O, for example, where you can easily just enable those sensors instead of having to assign this externally in Home Assistant, it'll already be assigned before you even go in and add it to Home Assistant. The pin, so right here you'll see we have, it's calling on the expander board, and then we have a hub. So you can see where we added these two, we have hub, and then we have hub two. So that's where I said, if you change these, this is hub. So you see it highlights all of these because it's referencing the pins on that hub. So it says this pin, it's on the uh, expander board, the pin number of the board. In this case, it's pin zero. It is an input and it is inverted to true. And that's it. I just went through, added all of these. So we have pin one, which is on number one. Again, the same hub. It's a window in this case. Then I have a... Then we have a motion one. This is just for you guys to be able to identify a motion, a window, and a door. Yeah, one more thing in here for my motion sensors, I'm using cheap little sensors. It is not inverted, so I just set this to false for my motion sensors. The only difference would be is it may work the other way around, so it may tell you that it detected motion where it's actually not detecting motion, and then when it has motion, it shows you it's not detecting motion. So. All you do is you just come in here and change that if it is the reversed order. So going down, everything is exactly the same. The only difference in these are the pin number and the board that it's referencing. If you scroll down, you'll see that there is the second expander board. So I just added it in here. The only difference on this is we're going to use the hub two for that second expander board. So we go down and everything is exactly the same. And that is about it. There's nothing much to it. Once you have it in here, I will go through and set up this in uh, OLOM in the future. But for now, I just wanted to give you guys something you can take a look at. And maybe if you want to go through and build your own board, you can go through and set it up and copy the code that I have in here. Thank you.
you don't even need to actually set up a perf board. You can just connect it with jumper wires. However, that could become very messy. Once you have everything in here, you can just hit the install button and you should be good to go. Again, the first time you flash the ESP, please make sure that you're just connecting the USB externally without it being connected to the board. And also never have the board and the 12 volt connection connected at the same time. Please just don't do that. Uh, you may run into some issues when you try and set it up that way. I made you a quick demo for you guys just to show you that it is actually functioning. So connecting these up are fairly simple. You can see I have a basic sensor right here. It's just connected to the ground and then I'm going into 12 volt. Again, these are better functioning at higher voltages. I have no idea. Some sites say it can power up to 20 volts. Some say it can go up to 35 volts. I've never seen one that shows below 12 volts. So I'm using the 12 volts for the long distances. However, the output is always just going to be 3.3 volts on these itself. And the data pin is coming in here. So if I move right there, you can see, there we go. It shows that the state has turned on, meaning that it did detect movement. And now that there's no more movement, it has turned off again. With these pins, we can go through, and if we tap any of these to ground, you can see that it does change these states for those that has all been connected on here. Uh, this is straightforward, so everything is working. Normally, when you set this up the first time, you would go through and test every single pin to make sure that it is functioning like it needs to. The same with the IR, make sure all your PIRs is working like it needs to do. You may need to adjust the sensitivity and the um, duration of those, but in this case, everything seems to be working like it should. And, and then to test out the relay, what I'm going to do is quickly move over to the computer and then just take that IP address right here and open it up in the browser. Once we have it in here, we'll see we have the relay right here, turning on and off on there. I'm not sure if you can see the light coming on, but it is working like it needs to. And that's going to be it for this one, guys. Just real quick showing you what I did, how I set it up. I know it didn't go in too deep into detail on these. These are fairly simple to set up. And I did cover a lot of these topics before on my channel. So you can go through and take a look at those. And for everyone else, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you are interested in just buying a pre-made board that can take a lot of sensors, I did do a video on that previously. And Simon Says Home Assistant also did a video on a different board from the same supplier that has a bit different IO options available for you to make use of. I'll leave a link to his video down below. And if you guys have any questions, please, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer with as much detail as possible. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day.